Hello everyone, welcome to Enlog, uh, where we meet, learn, network and uh, grow together. Uh, this is the third blockchain e-weekend and we are very happy to have you here with us. Um, so when we started this new series, uh, we pledged that every weekend will be a new theme. So you know, we have been speaking about careers in blockchain, we have spoken about building payment systems on different blockchains. Today's theme is uh, planning the best crypto portfolio. All right. Now the world of cryptos has opened up in a big way. Uh, overseas, of course, it was already there. But in India, it has opened up uh, lately because of the Supreme Court decision. Now, although there are people who are aware of cryptocurrencies and everything, but people are not really aware about how to design a good crypto portfolio, you know, which gives them the best value in time. So now this meetup, this virtual meetup that aims to help the crypto followers and investors to uh, get their bearings on uh, get bearings right actually on when it comes to maintaining a solid best and uh, profitable crypto portfolio now i can see there are many people who are still joining with us uh, joining us here welcome to the entire audience attendees yeah. there are so many people around uh, thank you very much for being with us we have a fantastic panel today to uh, discuss uh, the this entire theme um, we'll do it in two two phases. Okay, the first phase is a, a session, a presentation, which is taken by one of the speakers, and then we will have a short panel where we'll discuss the entire crypto portfolio, the discussion with everybody, uh, the, the panelists here. So, without uh, much ado, uh, the people will keep on coming. So, please, uh, you know, call your friends, let them keep on coming. Um, if you have any questions, audience, there is a question tab on your right hand side, on this side, as you see, a questions tab. All right. You can um, ask a question there, and uh, we will also allow one or two of you to raise your hands and then ask a direct question. Then you will also come live in front of the speaker and to the audience, and you can ask a live question to uh, our speakers as well. All right. So, I, and of course, you can keep on chatting, and uh, you know you you can also now the entire AM it has changed. You can make direct uh, discussions with some people. All right. So welcome again, and let's get started. First and foremost, things is you know my name is Shantanu Sharma, and I'll be the host uh, for your entire evening today, not the entire so for one hour. And uh, so right now, let's get started, and let's introduce uh, to you our uh, you know our speaker panel here. Uh, first of all, welcome to Mohak Agarwal. Mohak, thank you very much for joining in, guys. He's the founder CEO of Wolfetch Capital. And uh, he's a thorough analyst. He reads the uh, you know documents very thoroughly and finds out what kind of uh, you know uh, work that he has to do, what kind of investments he has to make. And I think he must have probably put in around 350 uh, projects that he must have actually gone and analyzed and read and made investments in. All right, thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for inviting me. Pleasure, absolutely. Uh, I have uh, Sachin Jain with me. Sachin Jain, all the way from Bangalore. Thank you very much for joining us, Sachin. Uh, well, guys, he's uh, pretty well known in the industry as one of the master fund managers and uh, travels around the world trying to get people to make the right investments. He is the co-founder of Amistan Asset and has a background with one of the largest exchanges in the country, uh, CoinDCX. Uh, Sachin, thank you for joining us. We look forward to your session. And uh, last mind. but not the least, I have <laughs> Stephen here, yeah, Stephen Enamakel, I'm sorry. And he is founder CEO with Crypto Control and uh, Visions, uh, a fantastic, uh, how do I call it? Uh, he's a mathematician, if I may say so. He's a computer freak, a computer fanatic, and of course, he's a, he's a crypto lover. Okay, he does advise a lot of people who do the right you know, investments. Yeah. And, <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, they don't listen to my advice and they've lost a lot of money. If they did, uh, they would have lost money. <laughs> a lot of people don't, you know, they don't listen to a lot of people as such. So, <laughs> it's good. so Great, good to good to have you guys here. Um, so, uh, just to ensure that everybody understands, we will have one session. Then you can ask a question. So, the first session which I've uh, I have here is with Sachin Jain. I will be hiding myself so Sachin can get the entire uh, talking space here. So, Sachin, the stage is yours. Uh, please go ahead. You can share your screen and give your Thank entire you. thing. Yeah, please. Sure. Your watch is not clear, so if you can probably, you know, if you want, you can switch off your video for a while and share it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just a minute. Yeah, your, your video is stuck. Uh, guys, can you see his videos? I mean, if you can. 
सचिन uh please you can always make your uh, presentation yeah cool so i will uh, now is this possible now you can see yeah 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 can you see yes yeah. yeah. i can see wow. the message as uh, i'm sharing my screen yes sir uh i i i need a response from someone if i may uh, like my screen is available or not Yes, sir. Steve Shantanu. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so sorry, uh, sorry for the trouble. Even you can. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, sorry for the trouble. Go ahead without wasting any time. Okay, so the topic for today is planning the best crypto portfolio. But uh, uh, I believe that finance there is nothing best. But uh, I will uh, I will focus on the app, uh, 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 making a portfolio which is app for you, not best. Because for me something else is best. For Shantanu something else will be best. For Abhi Mani someone uh, something else. So I focus on the app part. Okay. And apart from that, uh, apart from that, uh, instead of what to invest, I will focus more on the part of how to invest and how to go about it. You know. So let's start. So there are three key factors. Which I have approached are uh, not only me but many of the investors which I religiously follow that have been successful in their life have followed these three factors, you know, to make it big in their world. Uh, this can be anything like not only cryptocurrency but any investment, let it be crypto, uh, uh, equity markets or uh, or uh, you know stock market or mutual funds or whatever. These are the three main important factors which you you should be focused on. so one of the most important factor which most of the people don't understand is your goals you know why you are investing now some people will be like okay uh, i will invest uh, in bitcoin and it will be 50000 dollars and whatever it may be but uh, uh, you are, like you are traveling in a train without any destination you don't know where you are going to you know and maybe money in 3 years not in 5 years you know so defining your goals is very much important okay very much important second thing is appetite like what is your risk appetite you understand what the meaning of risk appetite and the third thing is asset allocation i will go through all the points again so let's go to the goal okay now this is a person who is a investor okay there are three types of goals one is short term goal one is mid term goals and one is long term goals okay now short term goals can be like buying something for yourself like a leisure car or a bike or travel around the world and mid term goals can be marriage or like you know buy a house for yourself long term goals can be like of course after getting married you will be having a child so upgrading like uh, his education and what what not and the most important thing is why i have highlighted retirement because it is the most common goal for everyone everyone wants to retire as soon as possible you know and simply enjoy the life with the better half or alone how they wish to you know but yeah this is the where where all of us meet this is where everyone's focus is retirement as soon as possible so i will speak more in the terms of retirement you know so defining your goals is very important without that you cannot so let let take an example that i have find my goal that i want to retire and for retire retirement i need a certain amount of corpus which will be used for my my uh, taking care of my myself and my family after when the regular income stops you know so uh, what, what is what, uh, what is we call as retirement okay now risk appetite now how to come to risk appetite it basically i have given two example over here there are two people 
uh, one person's age is 45, the other is 28. The years to retirement for the 45 age guy is 13, and years to retirement for a third old person, you know, is like year to old person is 30 years. Okay, so the risk appetite pretty much changes over because in 13 years I want to retire and I have a purpose. I cannot screw up my so I will not take any decision which is going to or I won't go any aggressive investing and everything which will impact my whole life just because I didn't advance. But for a 28 age year old person who has 30 years, like three decades, you know, till now to retire, his risk appetite will be than the person with 45 age, you know. So your risk, appetite, your age, your goals, this is very important because then if you do not plan this, you will screw up. Let's take an example. Uh, these two people started investing five years back. Okay. And uh, for the retirement of 45 years old guy, it's like eight years away. And for this guy, it's like still 25 years away. You know, and now we have pandemic. Pandemic is causing so many problems like job loss is happening, markets have crashed. So all your financial plans have scattered. It, it's like destroyed, you know. A lot of people are not such a lucky you know, to have everything in place, you know. So when you start investing without any, like, it, like this guy has started investing without any goal, like the risk appetite. So the age, 45 age year old guy would have been screwed up more because in next 8 years he had to achieve what he lost from the last 5 years because of the pandemic and also the next 8 years what he had. You know, so it, it will become very difficult for him. But if he would have started investing in such a manner that he is he's agreeing that there will be some crisis every decade there is a crisis, sometimes it's a financial crash, sometimes there is a pandemic, sometimes it will be a war. You know, we cannot, there's a lot of uncertainty and every time after 10 years, 12 years, there will be something which is not in your control. And that's all this has to be planned when you plan your investment portfolio. Because trading is very different in the short term and you know, you can go about it how you want. But when it comes to investment, you have to be very serious and define your goals and risk capital. Uh, because without that, Sachin, you are going to... Sachin, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, but there are a lot of people who are uh, complaining that, you know, they can't hear you and your voice is cracking. So, uh, and plus, you know, I can see ah. from here that your bandwidth is not really showing uh, proper. So, can you go to a place where, you know, uh, you basically have uh, better bandwidth or, you know, better connection? Okay, let me try. Let so me we try. can see let your, uh, you know, network is uh, showing as unstable and poor. So, we can go to a place where we can see the, probably the thing will come. Yeah. Uh, how is the bandwidth now? I think it's clearer. Um, I want confirmation from the audience as well. Is it much yeah, better? Yeah, yeah, confirm. Yeah, 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 it's better, much better now. Because uh, you know, uh, you can see even the thing is better. Five stars. Yeah, five stars. Okay, please, please now? go ahead. Okay, please go so ahead. I will again start with the uh, with the pandemics. Uh, I think I will just start from there. Okay, so this, this, these two people, let's take an example. They just started five years ago investment, and this pandemic has a big block block, you know, in their journey of investment. Okay, so if you plan your investment well in advance, you know, and uh, define your goal and risk appetite, because for some people, uh, even this pandemic has caused a lot of problem, but for some people, their risk appetite is high, so they are not. Bit you know, they're like, like this 28 year old guy, they're, they're not much worried because they have a lot of time to, you know, uh, get back on the, on the track. But for the guy who is like just away, like eight years away from retirement, it will create a lot of issues for that guy. You know, so like I told goals and retire, uh, your uh, risk appetite is very much important. Here I'm speaking, uh, a retirement corpus as a goal. Okay. So the risk appetite depends on person to person, age to age. Horizon to horizons, like how much uh, uh, horizon is remaining for the retirement, you know, and uh, uh, what are the goals, depending on that. Now, the third part is asset allocation. You know, there are a lot of assets where people invest. You know, I have listed few assets, uh, which is uh, really famous and people actually do this. Okay, so I have just given like equity is there, but it's risky. Crypto is highly risky. Death is relatively risky. I will not tell it's not risky at all. Some people compare that debt fund is like, uh, very safe, but it's not like that. It recently, you would have seen so much problems in banking and everything where even people who have invested in debt funds have lost money, which is very rare. 
you know so there are little less risky bank deposits which is like only saving gold is for safe haven when such problems uh, come you will you know just uh, save your or your or, or you store your money over there that side for safe haven of store of value and real estate is like completely dead you know so i want to focus more about the crypto because that's what we are uh, speaking over here so uh, uh, any person who has because i have been uh, i have a asset management firm okay so we do a lot of exercises with our clients you know defining their goals understanding their needs what what is their uh, time horizon what is the risk appetite so we do a lot of uh, this thing and what i have seen is basically even if i have the highest risk possible we would tell them to allocate more than 10% to cryptocurrencies okay because uh, the it's a, we have a lot of data which have see uh, in the past that uh, even with 10% of allocation of a total uh, 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 portfolio in crypto you will have multiple returns also at the same time when equity markets are crashing crypto will give you enough bandwidth to not lose much on the downside but when you do it ultra and go more crypto focused you know uh, so it like will uh, even in downside you will be having a lot of problem even in upside will be like very high you know so a balanced portfolio is very much important but uh, uh, some people will be like you know they don't believe in equity and they, they don't believe in crypto but i am speaking here as a fund manager uh, whatever you believe in it doesn't matter what gives you money is actually that matter because that's why you are investing you are investing because you don't want to you know, lose the value of whatever money you have because every year there is inflation going up and up and up you know and there are a lot of things going on so your money, even if your money is sitting in the uh, bank deposits you know uh, fed is cutting uh, the interest rate zero to zero and uh, even our rbi is cutting down the uh, uh, savings deposit rate so even if we, it sits on the bank deposits it's like losing money at the all the time you know so it, investment is necessary but yes a uh, proper allocation is very much important now let's speak about crypto because that's what we are here to do okay so crypto or any fund or, or or equity markets the fund allocation or the portfolio allocation is basically uh, uh, into uh, like four or five types of these things but i want to focus only on two because that's what the major of the people do <laughs> okay now and this is also for people who are very normal like they don't understand much of the technology you know they are just investing because they want to make money out of it you know so uh, there are two types of portfolio which i have seen which is very normal that is cap wise the capital market capital wise and second is sector wise okay now over here is large cap mid cap small cap large cap can, can be a top 10s you know uh, cryptocurrencies mid caps can be from 50 to 200 and below that goes to small cap you know for a, a generic definition and there are say, sector wise uh, proto- uh, uh, tokens which is utility tokens protocol tokens payment tokens security tokens now what happens in the sector wise thing is basically first thing is you need to understand what it is what is the utility token what's the protocol token what's the payment token what's the security token after understanding you should always you should also able to understand what will be the growth in the coming days but if you go all in in utility or all in in protocol and if if, if, it, if it doesn't have any uh, uh, real life adoption or it's just uh, it's just a uh, uh should i tell it just a protocol like uh, uh, like it, it doesn't have any real life application so i don't know how much the growth will be there now right now there will be some growth because a new thing people want to invest people want to you know explore uh, technology and everything so people will do but the longevity or the sustainability will be in question so i don't like sector wise investing because it 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 makes a it makes a person a normal person's life very difficult because when he don't understand and what happens this sectors also will you know come in fashion and go away there will be a time when there everything will be of you know a utility tokens way will come or a payment tokens way will come or a secure tokens way will come and every time you cannot be means you, you will not be able to uh, keep up with the sp- uh, uh, pace you know and lose money somewhere so the best thing what i do is basically we allocate your portfolio cap wise you know this this is basically what happens that it it's a standard formula all over the markets you know you if you have a very less risk less uh, risk appetite you go to large cap if you have very small uh, huge uh, uh, risk appetite you go with the small cap okay now all this will come into three types of investing 
there are, again there are a lot of types of investing but this is where i want to focus first thing is growth investing second thing is value investing third thing is emerging project investing okay now growth investing is basically investing in projects which are there in the market for a long time well proved uh, good application a lot of people recognize it a lot of people invest in them and they will be continuing to be the market leaders like uh, sorry I, i was saying it was funny uh, like bitcoin or ethereum or litecoin you know these are the few of the projects which have been in, uh, in the market from a long time and over a period of time they have given good growth in investing you know and uh, the community grows the, the the adoption grows the usage of the networks and the technology grows you know so this is growth investing which where i don't want to do much of the research but i want to stick with the large caps or the blue chips or the people which are like the leader of the markets and you understand that when it when the market bull run starts you know it starts with this leader of course it won't be multifold as a small cap or a mid cap but this is where it start and this is where it ends you know and when the downside comes relatively the downside is very less in this things like if you see a altcoin it crashes like 90 95% uh, bitcoin will be like 70% ethereum will be like 80% you know it depends so yeah so uh, uh, the the downside also is relatively less i am not telling less less but it's relatively less when it compared to other projects you know the second thing is value investing value investing is basically finding projects which are you think in your in your understanding or in a general community understanding that this project has a lot of potential but the market is not rewarding it it with right value okay now here ripple comes into a picture because uh, ripple have just like anything like but a lot of people in the community believe that uh, xrp is going to replace ethereum or bitcoin and this is the currency of the future because of the technology because of speed because of the bank adoption and everything and value is it is like crashing only it's going down and down and down same way cardano you know cardano or aeon so these are few projects in the in in in, in the uh, market which is like have good potential technology wise but the market is not giving the, them you know a uh, a uh, 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 right reward what they deserve now whatever names i am taking is just to give you an example don't buy because i don't recommend anything over here you know and the third thing is emerging projects like icos whatever you do right so you can you can read like mohak is going to do the next panel or, or the next presentation you know so he is the master in that he 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 has uh, read over 300 projects and invested in the best which has given multiple returns in 2017 2018 you know and still he is on the hunt of you know looking for such product uh, projects and this, this is his forte you know so emerging project again it is like you know a per, a person who has a lot of interest in the field who understand what is going to happen frankly speaking when i started in cryptocurrency i only know bit i only knew bitcoin and ethereum and litecoin and three four things i never knew what ethereum does Uh, what is smart contracts and everything so when i started i just started with bitcoin because that's what i knew you know and uh, i went with that and it's it was pretty rewarding because uh, i didn't want it to put in uh, a money in something which i don't understand or which i don't believe into you know so emerging project investing is like a very um um what should i say very very difficult it's not like as easy like uh, you know there is someone uh, a uh, a uh, twitter anonymous account is shilling some project and you go just whitelist whitelist yourself and enroll for the ico just for you know flipping for 5x or 6x on ico uh, it's very bad because uh, sometimes or, or maybe in near future if not soon near future this bubble is going to get burst you know it's not going to be like this always because then uh, it will be nothing like you know just any person coming into the market and putting in five into five icos and one ico will give them 5x listing and they will be out you know it it doesn't work that way uh, it's not only i don't blame only crypto markets for that even in stock market when dot com bubble started started like that only even in indian market when pharma market started uh, pharma market also started like this only and then there was a crash and now after 5 years we are seeing some bull run so for 4 5 years nothing happened you know so this this gives uh, this kind of projects if you just uh invest into without understanding it gives you a short term pleasure but uh, i think when it comes to investing and not trading you should look for something sustainable where you will 
get a huge reward for your patience and for your belief in the project you know so this is the three which i really focus on you know and again coming to the picture where there are two people you know so portfolio allocation for a person who has a age of 45 and very small time to retirement so i will tell them to focus more on large caps be- yes sachin sorry to bother uh, there, there is a small bar coming below where it says stop sharing you can hide it you know oh, to see what is written there just hide that i it's thought like sorry thank you thank you very much no, it's fine and yeah you continue yeah, okay yeah, so this, is, this is where it ends so portfolio allocation is basically there are two type of people again the same people where we took the example above you know so so if the if the person has a very limited time for his retirement because i told right right now we are going to focus on retirement at the corpus and that's the goal you know so 13 years if he invest into something which is very risky he can lose everything everything in a year or 6 months because of the mistake that he did, did, did you know but if he focuses on the market leaders which has given good returns in the past like bitcoin and not only returns you see you have to see the downside also so every year if you see the low of bitcoin it's up it's always up from the last low you know so don't see on the upside see on the downside how many of the projects will be in the same thing not many i think you know so this is where you have to think that okay i have very less time and this is where i don't want to take a lot of risk so i will suggest that focus on growth investing with large caps give major of the portfolio like i have given 80% here to that and go for investing i am not the rest of you i am not telling you go for money market because that also again it will be a gamble because if that person selects like five to six percent and all of them gets listed in the bear market he loses everything you know so i will suggest that person to go for value investing where projects have some good infrastructure good community good backup good promoters you know but due to some issues due to some issues uh, the value is not rewarding enough but the span of 13 years when the project will grow automatically the value also will grow and when it starts growing it will be multifold it will multifold we have seen a lot of examples in the past you know where uh, there will be a small block because of some issues but the, the company's uh, uh, books or the company's infrastructure or the company's uh, 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 the value of the service has not gone down only but, but because the market is not rewarding enough they are stuck you know so this is what a uh, ideal portfolio allocation will be for that person and for a person who has like this 28 years of guy you know he has 30 years of retirement and he has a lot of time so again i will not nullify the growth investing because i want to provide the downside which i which i told you about, uh, about in, the, in in last uh, couple of minutes right so when the market crashes you know so the downside will be protected by this growth uh, uh, investing on large caps with the very less allocation also they will provide a good downside comparatively to completely uh, altcoin portfolio or something you know so when it comes to large cap i believe only in top to that uh, ethereum and uh, bitcoin as of now you know and value investing again i will suggest with a very small uh, allocation like uh, 25% with mid caps and small caps both you know you, you can always see project Uh, which get listed just before the bear market they give good returns for a certain amount of time but when the market crashes they also crashes you know so these are the projects th- which are really good and make a comeback in the next cycle you know so this is how you scout uh, uh, scout this uh, 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 value investing in mid caps and small caps with 25% but here i am telling that you give more uh, value or, or allocation to a emerging project uh, projects rather than value investing over here because you have three decades you have a lot of time you know for uh, for uh, if any wrong is done you can always uh, uh, go back and rebalance yourself and make a comeback because you have a good amount of time Th- three decades is a lot of time you know to uh, uh, to uh, complete your goals and everything uh, as far as retirement is concerned so i will uh, uh, give more weight on emerging project take that risk you know and go ahead with that and find uh, uh, find projects which are uh, which you believe that will change the 
paradigm of the uh, markets or uh, the IT industry or the blockchain industry in general, what's going to happen in the future, you know? So this is how I will allocate. So like I told, like I will be more focused on the how rather than the what, you know, because it doesn't matter because uh, uh, there is no data as such over here, only for uh, large caps that they are there, but there is no data or there is no standard or benchmark where I can compare the rest of the market because they have a life cycle of three to four years and then they die and then the new project, you know, so it's a very nascent state. It's a very nascent state. Uh, we do not have like, let's take an example. If we have a banking, uh, banking sector, uh, let, let's go to a traditional market for simple uh, understanding of what I want to say. Let's take an example. There's a banking market, you know, and you have leaders like HDFC, Kotak Bank, uh, ICIC, or not, not IGS and Kodak Bank are leaders. ICIC and Axis are the next leaders. And then comes Bandhan Bank, you know, which is like relatively new or something, you know. So uh, I uh, uh, I have the benchmark of HDFC. I have the benchmark of ICICI. So I can compare that, okay, in su- such years or in so many years, Bandhan should perform this much. Then only I will be considering this as a potential investment, you know. This I cannot do over here because there is no books, there is no such uh, 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 transactions or uh, uh, what should I tell, profit or revenue book or something. It's just about, you know, that what they are doing, what partnerships they are bringing in, uh, uh, wh- how big is the community and all this stuff. So, yeah, this is how I want to allocate uh, uh, two age groups uh, with certain, certain things, you know. But at the same time, Let's take an example. This is the last point, which is very important. A lot of people make a lot of mistakes over here. Now let's take an example with the 45, 28. It's like he has a lot of time. He can do a lot of things. Let's take an example. 45 age. I, uh, I, I am 45. Let's take an example. I am 45. In next 13 years, I want to retire. I invested Bitcoin, which is like $10,000 today. Okay. When, when uh, Bitcoin goes to 45,000 rupees, uh, sorry, $45,000, I will be able to meet my retirement goals. My retirement goal is in 13 years away. And I believe that in next 10 years or 13 years, Bitcoin will be $45,000 and I will be able to retire. What if this 10,000 to 45,000 journey happens in the next three years? I still have a decade in my hand, but my money is done. You know, my retirement corpus has been met, you know. So in that case, a lot of people, what they get greedy or you know they don't understand what to do so they continue to hold it now from bitcoin goes to 45000 to 80000 50000 it's, it's still volatile but it's still above my buy price or my goal price actually my goal price was 45000 and it's still volatile but you know in a range of 60 to 70000 or 50000 but still above and when the time comes that okay yeah this is the year where i will retire this is the time when i need the money and I go on a day where I want to liquidate my assets and market and it goes below 40,000, 35,000 and there is no end to it. And all my years of patience and investing has gone into a toss for few days. Okay. So this is where the rebalancing factor comes in, you know. So if in the next three to four years, my retirement corpus is met, I will liquidate my asset there and there and I will take it to a stable asset like a death fund or maybe if I don't believe in equity markets I will take it to a stable coin you know and keep it there and I will start lending it to the platforms where I can get some 0.5% uh, to 1% of returns you know in this way corpus is still there even if it's, it's, it's like not making Bitcoin is going 45 to 90,000. I should not be worried because my purpose is met. I am done now. At the same time, I even I have even uh, liquidified. I kept it in a uh, in a asset which is very stable, you know. And at the same time, I'm ending it, so I get some amount of uh, 0.5 percent to 1 percent of uh, whatever uh, 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 lending platform is offering me. So I should be content with this. So when it comes to goal defining and period and reasoning, you have to stick with the rules. You cannot simply see that, okay, your projects is, uh, or your investment is going multifold and it's already has your goal, but you are still sticking with the investment. Believe me, 
hundred out of the seven times you will screw it up. You know, so it, it means you will uh, always it has happened like that. anywhere. If you have seen people have thought like, okay, I am happy with eighteen thousand dollars, but I will, uh, a lot of uh, it, uh, uh, experts are telling twenty five thousand. Thousand is a real possibility in the next two to three weeks, and I wait for that. But my goal was only eighteen thousand dollars. I'm happy with that. When it comes, get out. That is, see, a lot of investors. If you see, entry is very easy. You know, entry is very easy. It's not like he, uh, you are not going to get entry at price you want. You always get because if I want to give you a simple example, at sixteen thousand, forty thousand, seven thousand, a lot of people wanted to invest in Bitcoin. But they thought like the value is inflated. It's like too much up. You know, I will invest in Bitcoin, but I will invest at six thousand dollars. Okay, so if that person was patient enough, he got at least three or four chances to buy at six thousand dollars. You know, same way in market also, FC Bank was around fifteen hundred. Now it's eight eight hundred nine hundred thousand. You know, so the people who wanted to buy at a fifty percent discount are going to buy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we 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 need you to help you know us uh, get on time and if you can wrap up in another two minutes, please. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just my life, life point, you know. So so the my point is that you will get always get an entry. You will always get an entry. You know whatever price you want. The the biggest difficulty is the exit. Lot of people will be able to exit at the top, or, uh, exactly at the top, or the or the money they want. So if you don't define your goals today, if you don't define your risk appetite, you are going to mess up at every cycle. That's for return, you know. So your goals have your uh, priorities in uh, start today only. If anyone wants an Excel sheet, I have prepared Excel sheet where you will just uh, uh, put values that how much money I want to have in retirement. It will give you what all at eight percent per year or ten percent year or twelve percent per year. This much money you have to invest. This is the year, and everything will be there. Just have to act on that. Uh, so, oh, yeah, that's where I ended. Thank you very much. Yeah, Shantanu, you can take over. Awesome. Ah, uh, yeah. Please unshare the uh, you know the slides that is there. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 do that, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay, I'm doing that. No worries. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, Sachin. Thank you very much. I think you know it's pretty deep. You know because I guess you know the kind of experience that you have. is phenomenal and uh, you know of course not everybody has the liberty of the number of retirement years that is there and i believe there are a lot of youngsters in this entire in this in this audience i believe when they look at this uh, thing they'll probably understand you know the crypto portfolio is not just about putting your money and waiting for it to grow there has to be some rules of investments and these rules are are something which you have to stick to and keep on evolving from there on all right that's what i believe and that's how i work there are many questions which are there but because we are positive on time let's finish with the you know the other two uh, panelists here and then we will go into the larger segment where we will be pick up some questions from the audience and then do it uh, mohak mm-hmm. i would like to bring you in now um, and uh, i would like you to give give us a fear as mohak hey, you are mute you are mute mute sorry yeah yeah thank you shantanu uh, still uh, learning here me <laughs> yeah uh, great presentation sachin uh, now sachin has uh, covered lot of uh, great points uh, the first one being identifying your goals uh, and once you have uh, identified your goals and then i would go about Uh, making three buckets. One is the short term, where you have uh, a timeline of maybe uh, uh, you want that money back in let's say a uh, notice period of thirty days, and then a mid term bucket where your timeline is three to five years. Then uh, a long term uh, bucket where you're planning to uh, invest for your retirement. Uh, so as you all know, crypto is a very volatile uh, asset class. so the short term goes out of the picture right away now uh, let's talk about the uh, mid term and the long term uh, now once uh, you have created that these buckets uh, then you have to know your own risk appetite uh, how much is the money or how much is that whole capital that you are willing to uh, stay uh, invested in for that much uh, respective amount of time 
and how much uh, is it that you are willing to lose so if you are young then uh, you can choose to take much more uh, riskier approach uh, versus if you are close to your retirement then you would want to take a very um, careful approach um, so once you have identified this capital now the question comes in uh, where to invest right now the first point being uh, don't listen to anyone's opinion because if you listen to anyone's opinion about where to invest uh, you will end up badly uh do your own research try to find all these projects their token economics their team uh their road maps and th- all those things now once you have identified uh where to invest in it's pretty simple right seems so but it's not uh then you have to uh think about when to invest what should be the uh entry price right and majority of the times you'll find a lot of people who uh, even after having great understanding of markets uh knowing that this is the asset where i want to invest in uh struggle about taking the entry because they want to have the best possible entry uh right but uh believe me if you try to time the market you will fail uh there is a saying that even if you have a mediocre entry strategy but great risk management you can do very well versus even if you have very very superior entry strategy but bad risk management or money management uh you will you will end ba- you will end up uh, being broke right uh and then uh, i mean so when you are doing all these uh, spend more time in doing these research rather than jumping on trade or investing right away it's like i mean investment investing is like cutting the tree where 85% of your time should be spent on uh, sharpening the axe and uh, the end job which is the cutting the tree or investing mm-hmm. should be as effortless as possible right if you are making uh, most of the assert, uh, efforts or putting a lot of your resources in executing the trades or uh, spending most of the time in executing those investments then uh, you are definitely doing something wrong so spend more time on the research now, now when you have identified these two then what comes is the position sizing uh that is one of the most important thing in uh investing because uh sometimes uh ev- mm. have we lost him i think we lost him so when he joins back we will again talk to him as well because i guess you know the internet is very sketchy all around the world so um So, uh, Stephen, I mean, uh, let's let's get on to hop onto you right away, and uh, would like to understand your perspectives of what you believe is uh, planning the uh, crypto portfolio. How, what is your thoughts around it? Then we get so, into the panel discussion. So, Mark has joined. Should we let him continue or? Uh, okay, Mark, can you Mark, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Uh, I, yeah, uh, was I not audible? You can. No, you were not. You had broken off. You had uh, you know gone off the of the stage. Oh, so it's all right because we don't we don't see you, but I think because the internet is very sketchy, you can complete your point and then we move on to Stephen. Okay. Uh, the, where did I leave? Point. Where did I leave? You were you talking about the third point? You know, once the first two are finished, then you move on to the third, and you get on okay. to that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, the uh, uh, the diversifying part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe take uh, two minutes on it and then we move on. Sure. am i uh, am i audible now yeah you audible you yeah, audible yeah. yeah and you can keep your video off because in the video may be uh, coming right. away of internet ban right uh, sorry for all these uh, internet issues <laughs> um now uh, i was talking about the position sizing uh, that is one of the most important thing when it comes to investing because uh, everyone would say to you that please diversify please diversify but do not over diversify if you would have thousand or hundreds of assets in your portfolio and one of them becomes big or two of them become big you're not going to gain anything right uh, so uh, diversify uh, your di- diversification strategy directly correlates to your uh, risk appetite where um, if you again are very young you can take a much more riskier approach where you have a very concentrated portfolio uh, whereas if you are close to your retirement you will take a very uh, diversified approach right um, yeah yeah and um, now once you have uh, identified these three uh, then you can plan on uh, uh, 
actually moving on to the investment part now when i uh, when i talk about these three things uh, i talk about at a very higher level uh, on the lower level you you would have to uh, think about things like for example when you are doing diversification you have to see uh, are you doing the sectoral diver- diversification are you doing the time based diversification but uh, if you are new to this i would not suggest you to look anything beyond the top 25 uh, projects uh, in crypto uh, i mean there are a lot of bad projects in top 25 but that's where your own research will come in and if you are a very experienced person then you can also uh, look forward to the hedging strategies where you can uh, learn about the option geeks and then uh, put on the hedge and do not consider a hedge where you can make majority of the money from uh, it is it is like an insurance uh, which would come healthy uh, if the market goes south so uh, that is something uh, you can explore yeah okay cool uh, so thanks thanks mok for your inputs uh, stay back and we will uh, you know join in again with the uh, for for a small short discussion between all of us uh, steven uh, you know we are putting you on on this panel now uh, steven if you can just a minute please yeah can you can you oh, talk wow. for yeah should we start yeah, yeah please please yeah, your perspectives on the crypto portfolios and all and then we can right so just to give a background like right so just to give a background guys i'm i'm coming from a very very uh, technical background uh, more from a um, more from a coder perspective right and uh, i've advised and i've invested as well uh, on projects that seem very good very sound from a technical perspective and the ones that seemed like home runs right for example eos uh, was a coin i invested in, in in when it was about 50 cents and i cashed out at 11 dollars and it you know it went to a high of 18 dollars at one point of time so that was a massive win because it was a very sound project technically right when you had a lot of these projects that you know were just photocopies of bitcoin or were not very sound technically so in the crypto space one of the most important aspect is the technology right the underlying technology behind a coin uh and so if that is something you don't understand or something that looks like a photocopy or something else right uh it's probably not going to do so well right and uh, these are the i advise to a lot of people uh for instance there was this one guy a very amazing story uh he would invest 3 crores 3 to 4 crores on every ico on on a per ico basis and many of the icos i told them i warned them that you know this is shady it it is it does not have any technology behind it they're just you know speaking in the air right <laughs> and he's lost all the money so <laughs> so, uh, so it's always important to understand uh, in any team the the code is the code open source uh, who is the cto because a lot of these crypto projects the cto is really the guy who sort of is running the show right <laughs> and uh, um make sure that that uh, that you are you yourself are validating the code uh, and seeing if something is happening case in point is matic right so matic is a blockchain that a lot of people don't understand whether they're making progress or not right but really to understand how good matic is doing all you need to do is go into their github look at their source code and see the progress that they're making because it's a cryptocurrency uh you can see the code being developed by the team and you can see if they are making any progress or headway right so uh my contribution to this panel is basically from a tech perspective that um you know look at the underlying product behind uh, uh each of these uh, each of these altcoins um and some of them you know if you do a good analysis properly you'll find easily find the winners um uh, just like how i was able to find them very early on so so yeah that's that's it you can take it over shantanu okay thank you very much yeah i think i think it's a very pretty well said because you know when i was doing my initial investments i really looked at i used to go to github and there are people used to come to me ki kya main isme invest karu should i invest here or not and i still hey they don't have a github there is no point in trying to you know even invest in that and yeah like you said steven you know the people never listen to us and uh, 
you know they they lost money and uh, it's a, i mean as long as they they understand it and they know it that you know it's a risk that they have taken and the money is gone I, for a toss i keep reminding them <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah we, we call it in hindi jale par namak chhadakna so yeah we can we can keep on doing that when it comes to that you know but yeah so uh, ideally speaking you know i think what i'll do is probably change the way that the entire screen looks so all my panelists are here uh so my my question now is is an i'm opening the entire questioning from the public as well from the audience as well and uh, all that but i would like to start off with you know a very very simple question what a novice can ask is why is a portfolio really that important why is a portfolio important in somebody's life as i you know as a, i mean i can have a i can simply keep on investing but why is having a portfolio important sachin mohak steven so yeah. i mean the crypto yeah. portfolio is the one that gives the craziest amount of returns in the shortest time possible so i mean who has heard of returns like 20x or 100x in the equity market or in the uh, commodities or forex market it is crazy um, and uh, i mean because of that golden uh, you know story of people making 20x or 100x you know people are flocking to crypto um but you know uh, i think those were those those are 2017 wala times right so in yeah. 2017 is when what a lot of people got hyped up and they started seeing a lot of young kids make a lot of money uh, but today that is not the case today the space has matured a lot more um, so the reason why i mean at least what i feel most people look into crypto is that it's, a, it's, it's still a very new thing it's a new asset class it has a completely different value proposition uh than equities or commodities right um and if one of these i'm, I'm saying one because there's nobody right now if one of these blockchain projects really kicks home then we're talking about something that really has a deep impact in uh in our lives right yeah, so yeah. so i hope you know <laughs> god forbid i mean uh, god hopes that you know one of these projects kick off <laughs> yeah yeah such a okay. mohawk can give more in- Uh, yeah yeah uh, sure so uh, i mean building a portfolio uh, when you're not building a portfolio you are uh, maybe uh, just targeting the dart uh, darts on the uh, board uh, then you are not actually uh, uh, sorry is this uh, this is this too much no, it's it's such in it's such in it's such in's uh, you know he's sitting in okay. the open probably so i okay, do okay 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 yeah yeah sure uh, so when you're not uh, building a portfolio what you're doing you are just uh, throwing darts on the board right but when you are taking a systematic approach where you are taking uh, you are thinking about risk management you are thinking about position sizing you are thinking about when to invest you are thinking about when to exit uh, you uh, you are you're thinking about goals it also gives you a chance to brainstorm about things uh that you uh, have never thought before and also gives you uh, a chance to research about these things right because one thing leads to another when you want to invest you think about investing in crypto then you uh, think about where to invest then uh, you think about should i invest in utility token uh, or and then uh, you think about where which utility token should i invest in a protocol or in any dap token or in a defi project then you think about uh Uh, should i should i just invest for uh, a fixed amount of re- uh, interest in any defi project or should i uh, read more about the protocol then uh, you think about uh, now in order to analyze this pro- protocol i have to read the white paper so uh, it gives you a lot of chance to actually learn about a lot of things and during that time you will also make a lot of mistakes uh, which is which is totally fine as as long as you are learning something out of it uh but if you are just making these mistakes again and again then obviously uh again you are doing something very wrong hmm correct i think i think yeah it's important for somebody to analyze and sit and analyze and look back at whatever investments you have done in the past and then come up with you know remedy remedial actions on certain right. things which are not which are not working so that everybody is i mean there is uh, there's this uh, great quote when dyson was making the world's best uh, vacuum cleaner uh so he uh, developed 500 uh, 5127 prototypes so before that uh, one can say he had 5126 failures but uh, it was not those uh, i mean if uh, it wouldn't have those failures uh, then uh, we would have never seen the world's best vacuum cleaner right yeah, he learned actually. along the way and then made something great out of it 
Yeah, yeah. The same story goes for Edison, who says, "You know, no, I've I've learned how not to create a bulb. You know, ten thousand <laughs> ways. So probably his ten thousand first bulb worked. So he came to know that. So yeah, I think it's it's more to do with remedial action, more to do with learnings, more to do with the things as such. Sachin, I have muted you from my side, but now I'm not able to unmute you because there's a question which I thought I'll bring it to you, but I'll leave it to okay. open everyone here. I'm, oh, there you. Yeah, I mean, now, now, yeah. Thank, thank you for unmuting yourself. So uh, there's a question by you know Akshay uh, Aulbi, which you know catches my eye. Is he says that uh, what is the is it a is it a good idea to differentiate his investment portfolio into the kind of kind of technology that it is in? For example, if like if it's layer wise, so if it's layer one, layer two, layer three, or an application, if I differentiate my investments uh, in those ways, is that a good idea of you know putting money in? So maybe put some uh, some chunk in. Layer zero, then layer one, then layer two, layer three, or some DApps. How does it? What does it matter? So, uh, 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 any setup or any uh, allocation, allocation is like as good as or as bad as it can be. You know, so there is no such thing that uh, it it will create a problem or something because uh, when you have defined all the three factors which I have been mentioning all the time, it doesn't matter. You know. Uh, all it goes when you go to technology wise you know you become very focused uh, or uh, your portfolio has a very narrow approach towards growth not about the technology i'm speaking about but if one thing collapses everything will fall in place you know that's the thing so that's why i won't suggest that at this point you, you are mute i think Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> so you just don't get to see that red button with the cross. So yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, it's a good. Uh, it's a good point to say that you know probably look at it very pragmatically and say, hey, this is the money I have, and uh, technology wise, the the white paper wise, the team wise, make an analysis and make an investment. So so whether it's layer zero, layer one doesn't matter. The, the project should be good and should have a lively uh, future. And 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 I think the investments can go in that way. There's another question which comes, and a very specific question which says, you know, from Sri Ram Venkatraman. He asks, you know, DeFi tokens are looking very attractive for the past few weeks. All right, what are your thoughts on DeFi tokens from mid and long term perspective? It's a very direct question. You know, somebody yeah. looking at an advice, but uh, do you think you want to so give I an advice? So I can answer that. Yeah, yeah, please, Stephen. So Come basically, on. DeFi is a very new concept. Not many people. I'm pretty sure there are people who are going to be googling De- DeFi. Full form, what it is, right? Uh, in this call, because it's a very new, new thing, right? Um, and now the whole premise of DeFi, decentralized finance for short, is basically that um, you know you are creating a financial uh, you know ecosystem that is totally devoid of any government or any bank or any regulator, right? So which means that, if, for example, there is a, a loan, right, in this DeFi system. That nobody can really, you know, uh, dispute that. So nobody can really take down or, or fall back in that loan, right? Uh, because it's on the blockchain. Now, the main thing you want to look at for something like this is adoption, right? Mm-hmm. So if the blockchain space gets better adoption, because it today it does not have <laughs> good adoption, uh, if the adoption part is cleared, and which is what Matic and a lot of other guys are trying to do, then you want you want to see a lot of More people participating in the DeFi system, and that's when it starts to make more sense, right? Mm-hmm. So, if you are a firm believer that you know uh, blockchain is and public cryptocurrencies are going to get more used, then DeFi looks attractive because in the long term, uh, if there are more people coming into it, then of course the ecosystem kind of grows a lot more. Uh, but if that never happens, <laughs> then you know uh, we'll be at the same state for a while. So I would like to add something to it. Um, yeah, so yeah. DeFi is definitely a very new uh, concept. I mean, it's an experiment uh, right now. And as Steven said, that programmatically, uh, it is written in the code that, for example, if someone uh, took a loan, uh, then um, the moment his collateral drops below uh, the certain amount, the uh, asset gets liquidated. So uh, so that either party. doesn't lose money so sounds very good sounds very simple right but we are seeing uh, how prone uh, uh, is the current uh, defi projects um, 
prone to the uh, the uh, the problems for example uh, on 12th of march la- last month uh, when the market uh, collapsed like like anything crazily and we have seen what happened to majority of these defi protocols where the liquidations didn't happen because the chain was very congested uh and even yeah. on the centralized uh exchanges the liquidation couldn't happen because there was no uh demand from the buy side uh we we know uh bitmix uh hang for uh, around 10 uh, 10 minutes because uh, of having almost zero liquidity on the buy side right so uh i mean it is it is uh, nothing more than an experiment right now but definitely a uh, very growing space because uh, especially for countries like for example some uh, a country like india where the interest rates are so high then a western country where the interest rates are so low so uh, defi can bridge those gaps and uh, which can benefit both of the countries mm-hmm. yeah 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 absolutely yes yes i think probably defi does make sense but uh, it's all experimental right now it's all on no adoption and uh, definitely the technology when it keeps on going and we we see more and more people interested in this part they will have you know probably i think d5 will make a lot of sense uh, a, a very interesting question is you know can you speak about the insurance that the crypto investment can provide i am not really sure that i understand this or not but there is somebody called uh, priyesh jain from uh, from tech mahindra okay so he's he's asking this question uh, insurance that the crypto in- investment can provide i think probably he's looking at you know how much money can we make and so that you know like like what sachin was mentioning good for the you know uh, future prospects or maybe is there any insurance that a crypto investment can provide any any answer I think, to that i think as i said before uh, if, we, if i don't i don't fully understand the question but yeah. to the to the extent i understand it uh, as i said before uh, for example a hedge is like an insurance so insurance is something uh, from which you won't make any money uh, it is for the worst case scenario where if things go south then uh, it makes your life livable right or maybe uh, for a portfolio when you have a very hedged portfolio then even if things go south you don't lose a lot of money uh, so if you are looking crypto as a insurance uh, i mean one can one can uh, by maybe investing in a lot of riskier projects or maybe bitcoin uh, to the amount that they are willing to lose and they are not looking to make most of, most out of it but for the scenarios uh, where we have uh, things like governments collapsing or the whole financial model uh, getting crumbled uh so at that at those mm-hmm. times uh you can uh definitely look toward forward towards crypto yeah i think long term investments you know probably if you're looking at long term investment even even short term gains for that matter you know cryptos in many ways is m- are much better than other investments even even insurance for that matter yeah right? it's just, it's, in the last 10 just, years right in the last 10 in years there has not been yeah. any asset which outperformed crypto beat stocks bonds um, uh absolutely real estate metal anything absolutely and i i see another i don't know this is a question or not but it's, it's probably a a good business for you mohak somebody is asking <laughs> mohak can you help with the framework for investing in icos like, <laughs> so uh, 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 just short, adding short to that everything. point i have <laughs> uh, i have a very uh, i take a very systematic approach where we have a 47 metric anal- uh, analytical system uh, instead of running behind the hype but uh, as i said before do not listen to anyone in the sense uh, that uh, analytical system might work very well for me and the people for which uh, uh, to whom i am supporting but it might not work uh, very well for you because uh, the uh, it is all the strategy is always um i mean always uh, very um, uh, designed to the personal style of someone right so uh, i mean to some extent it could work uh, well for you but uh, it might not because uh, people think that investing is only about when to invest right or where to invest but it's also about how long to hold when to exit uh, and also very important thing is rebalancing the portfolio right uh maybe monthly or quarterly or yearly whatever you want but you would have to rebalance and uh whenever you uh you try to use someone else's strategy uh then you're not getting the uh first hand information of all the other things uh which that person is doing no matter how smart or how skillful that investor is 
so you would have to look at uh, all those things as well yeah so i i had a personal question you know i am probably you know because we have our own ways of looking at things but how does how does one differentiate between uh, uh, you know a good token and a bad token right so uh, i think that it's a great question uh, and uh, i mean uh, majority of the projects uh, where i have invested in their protocols uh, no matter how much i want to support it support dapps uh, dapps never gave returns so when you are looking at any crypto project you have to see uh, you have to analyze token economics primarily and there you have to see can this project survive without the use of token for example uh, sachin is in his presentation gave example of ripple uh, i don't want to uh, name uh, many projects but uh, or maybe not ripple uh, <laughs> as well <laughs> Uh, but there are a lot of projects where uh, even if you take the token out of the system, they can survive very well. Uh, they can serve their clients very well, right? So uh, mm-hmm. even if the business is growing, the token value is not growing. Rather, the token value has been extracted and given to the uh, only the, to the uh, few stakeholders of the company. Whereas if you if you want to actually invest in a good project. uh see if the governance is very well uh for example uh recently compound announced their own token uh which is the governance token where uh they have completely make made it decentralized mm-hmm. so look towards the projects which are very decentralized which has a very strong governance uh their project cannot survive without the token uh hi can you guys hear me Yes. Yeah. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, no, we can't hear you. Okay. Uh, yes, I can. I can. <laughs> yes, we can. I'm just pulling it. I don't know. I think you know. I'm having some issues with my own side probably, and I'm not able to uh, see, uh, hear people properly. Mohak, say something. Uh, say hi or whatever. Yeah. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yeah, okay, so okay, people can hear me, but I I'm having a feedback on my own stuff, but I will not refresh right now. So I will go with the flow. Uh, thank you guys, thank you very much. Uh, yes, okay. So uh, I'm not able to hear myself or the people, so but I'm not refresh. So I, I'll probably ask one one last question and then we'll close it because we are way past time. All right, and this question really excites me. You know, somebody has written. Now, how can we build a long term portfolio when there are news about that? Like. uh one uh, one thing i would like to add then maybe uh steven or sachin can answer uh there is a great saying by marty schwartz uh that if if the market gets uh, good news and the still and the market still gets uh, is going down uh then the market is very unhealthy and if uh market gets uh, bad news and still the uh, the overall the space is going up then the market is very healthy Yeah, now passing on to Stephen or Sachin, who yeah. ever want to uh, take power. So, Sachin, this is yeah, your okay, spot. So, uh, I'm so sorry, but uh, yeah, yeah. Sachin, Stephen, you're saying something? Yeah, yeah. Just one sec. Sachin, are you there? I'm here. Uh, yeah, I'm so here. This is this is your spot. You know, how? Why should we invest? Uh, if there is an upcoming ban, uh, possibility of a ban in India. What is the question? What is the question? Can you come back? So, so the question is, why should we invest in uh, in crypto uh, in ICOs when there's a possibility of a ban that is that might come in the future? Okay, 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 okay. See, uh, one thing uh, I guys, have uh, understood in the past is like, uh, can you hear me? Can you? Hear me? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Sachin. There's a lot of. I'm sorry, guys. I'll have to, you know, probably. Uh, we cannot. I'm sorry. 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 No, so so there will be some disturbance. Better. Sorry. Now, now it's clear. Now yeah, it's now it's better. better, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Glad my video is not on. 
Okay, fine. Um, so okay, yeah, so um, my my uh, thing is only that uh, okay. uh, uh, some things are not our control. You know, if there is a ban, we cannot do anything about it. You know, so uh, my suggestion will be to have a very small allocation. You know, of your overall portfolio to crypto. So there where there is a ban. So you can, you know, simply uh, exit without taking a big loss or something. Because uh, uh, this is a complete uncertainty. I think you don't want to kind of like, you know, it's got me. Yeah, that's the best thing to, you know, do that. If there is an uncertainty, so keep very uh, small allocation. And the small allocation is also very good, you know. In long term, it will be huge. I can guarantee you that you don't have to uh, have a, a huge You know, so it's okay. go ahead. Then you would have heard about a lot of stories where a lot of countries are trying, you know, to uh, ban things and everything. But uh, it's still going. So let's go with the flow in this. Got it. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, just just say, say yes. Can you hear me? Or yes. Is there a lot of disturbance? Yes. No, it's. You good. can hear me well. Okay. I cannot hear. Anything what people said. So if I but if I refresh, I I have a pro. I may not come back again. So yeah, I don't want to okay. be doing that. All right. So uh, I understand there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of people who are uh, who are still around. Um, but there are people saying that we can continue. Uh, do you want us to continue for another five ten minutes? So. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So give me a moment. I'll just refresh because I'm not able to hear anything, so I can't gather what people are saying. Just give me one moment. I'll just refresh. I'll vanish from the screen, but you guys can carry on if required. Okay. okay. Um, I think probably four five minutes. Uh, you know, the voice was completely breaking from everyone who was talking, and I couldn't gather anything. But anyway, so so we'll continue. We'll we'll continue for another five minutes, and uh, you know, th- there are some things that I probably would like to you know ask. Is there any question which is there? Which yes, there are a lot of interesting questions in the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why don't you read through and you know? There's one question about uh, a lot of EOS projects uh, being prone to 51% attack. Uh, ah, okay, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that is a very good question. Uh, I run validator nodes on around 40 validator nodes, and yes, uh, there are a lot of uh, proof of stake projects where, which are uh, very prone to civil attack. uh which has a very less number of uh validators available on their network and that too uh is not available uh, uh publicly for example no one can uh go and run a node on those networks rather you would have to take permission from the team or uh the uh direct access so uh but at the same time there are a lot of proof of stake projects which are which are very good uh in the sense who have a very large validator set uh where there is no nothing you would need from the team uh to become uh, part of their validator set you just have to uh, run a node so uh, when i talk about uh, diversification this is also one sector that you should uh, you should look towards because uh, staking uh, gives you regular returns it it's it's similar to dividends uh, in stock market but mm-hmm. uh, when you do get involved in any proof of stake project uh, do make sure uh, that it it uh, takes all your research criteria where uh, the 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 uh, project cannot do anything without the token because there is no uh, no point of gaining 16% or 20% uh, any year in those projects if the uh, token value itself goes 20% down right uh, so you uh, if uh, if you if you comes from finance background you can make uh, financial models where you can see the purchasing power of the token which is is it going up or going down um, by every inflation how how much is the inflation what is the adjusted reward rate so uh, those things if you can research well uh, then that that is something you should uh, definitely look towards awesome great great yeah steven did you find anything interesting that you would like to answer oh i, I love the first one so some of the key indicators this is into trading and, and so on uh yeah yeah okay and one of the things that you will find in 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 the trading aspect of things is that <laughs> a lot of a uh, lot of the coins a lot of the old coins when you invest you will find that they are easily manipulated in the sense that 
it just let's take example bitcoin right in bitcoin uh, last week in just one day a pump and dump of over a billion dollars 7% <laughs> pump 7% dump you know yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. now if this happened with reliance just because bitcoin is our reliance right you be shocked right a 7% pump and dump in that too in a matter of hours so uh, a lot of the altcoins are very manipulative and so really the key indicator at least what i look for is volume uh, but the real person who should who should answer this question is sachin uh, cuz sachin is a trader and uh, um, yeah would like to know more from you yeah, yeah sachin, so, so the the question is very it, simple it says that, you know what, they, what technical indicators should look at what technical indicators you should be looking at yeah yeah i, I yeah. got the question i got the question so my answer is very simple don't look at any indicators they are all bullshit <laughs> and uh, so the, 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 the what is the indicator indicator is basically uh, it gives you a data in the way you want that's it mm-hmm. that's it 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 simplifies what you don't understand you know so let it be a fibonacci retracement or a wave analysis or rsi or whatever the thing mbcd or whatever you use basically they are all the data of what you don't understand now to understand uh, the movement of the coin technically all you need to understand is the price action of it you know so price action is nothing but basically the movement of the price from a support to a resistance zone and the resistance zone to support zone that's it nothing else if mm-hmm. you can simplify your trading with this two factors of support and resistance and then comes the supply and demand if you learn this there is, there is no need for any uh, indicator or something because every indicator if you go in the deep and understand what they want to convey is basically built on this three four factors so if you see my uh, approach to investing or uh, or uh, maybe you know uh, uh, to trading also it's very simple stick to basics you know don't don't because there are a lot of i will tell you one very simple example you know if you apply five indicators or three indicators on your chart and you start trading that you know sometimes the indicators will give you something uh, a different type of signal but the price actually is not going in the direction you know mm-hmm. and when you apply three four indicators even one indicator you need a confirmation that okay this is this is what is going to happen or this is what is happening in that uh, in in that period smart money or the people who are driving the market has already made the money so at that point when you enter the trade either short or long you are entering at the point when most of the movement is already happened and what you is going to get is very less of the gains what you can get by using simple methods or you are going to get trapped in that okay mm-hmm. so my approach has always been a uh, simple of price action support and resistance and supply and demand that's what because supply and demand work for a toilet paper in supermarket if there is less supply of course the demand is high price goes up same happens in stock market same happens in crypto market you know supply and demand is the best and yeah. to apply the supply and demand on the charts in technical analysis support and resistance is where the smart money will work because the person who is driving the market with millions of dollars he will not see that rsi is giving the indication of down or whatever he he himself creates that movement right and they they take action on this support and resistance zone only because that's where most of the people get racked also because a uh, a retail investor they are very impatient they want to log on every support and they want to short on every resistance but support and resistance both are you know liable to break that's where the new price cycle start you know so you wait have you have to wait for the confirmation but a retail trader or a new trader they don't want they they are very excited for their trade they are very you know in fomo that they don't want to miss out this opportunity so they act very fast a person who 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 is there you know who is a trained or a pro guy kind of guy he waits for the right opportunity because the opportunity will be there every day it's not like if you don't make money or if you don't take a trade today your account will be banned 
your account will be there tomorrow the the bitcoin will be there tomorrow the markets are going to be there tomorrow so have patience uh, just simply support and uh, resistance only that's what i am telling you you will make a lot of money and yeah that's what i have been following from last three years of my trading in traditional market or crypto markets whatever markets is there i started trading uh, uh, us market futures also because there is exchange for prime activity which is giving a lot of uh, instruments so yeah. any market i don't understand for fundamentals everywhere this is what i do very basic uh, technical analysis and that's how it is been so yeah. you can create your own indicator that is a separate game true true that's yeah of course is. yeah of course so thanks yeah yeah i think uh, and there are, there are there are some fantastic other questions but i think you know we are way past time and i think it's it's almost saturday evening people have their oh, plans but there are two questions which are fantastic here yeah. one is of course you know we are all we've all been looking at you know coin market cap for a very yeah. long time now okay so the question here and there are two questions which are there so hence i'm asking that is does coin market cap ranking matter bullshit you know, yeah. when it comes to investment yeah coin market cap is bullshit okay uh, if you go to the exchanges <laughs> if you go to the exchanges every that. month uh, they will find a new change that nobody's ever heard of doing a billion dollars in volume <laughs> so it is bullshit right and uh, now a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the volume we know for a fact is fake right mm-hmm. and so basically coin market cap what it does is that basically it is calculating the market cap by multiplying the token supply with the price of a coin correct now i might have 1 billion steve coins right if i trade one steve coin for 1 dollar right the trading volume is 1 dollar but the the market cap is 1 billion steel coins 1 billion yeah. dollars worth of steel coins now what's happening is a lot of people can oh. fake those volumes so coin market cap i mean it used to be credible at one point of time uh but i mean now a lot of the i mean i'm seeing a lot of uh, i don't know bullshit <laughs> sorry for the language but you know a lot of uh, these scammy coins uh, and scammy exchanges right get listed on coin market cap so i mean it, it's It, you know, probably some money baggers could be projects that are not listed on Coin Market Cap. Uh, you know that that are yet to be found and such. But uh, I mean, definitely the top twenty mm-hmm. coins in Coin Market Cap are pretty decent. But I mean, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of crap. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of junk. I remember when I when I started off uh, four and a half five years back. Of course, Coin Market Cap was just about started off way back in 2015 sixteen. the the data that they have is from 2013 of course you know the idea basically is uh, i started off with mo- uh, just about 900 coins okay listed all right and uh, last year last year november you know i had gone for a for a, a training program where i was providing training and i had listed okay how many coins are there on coin market cap there were 2860 coins all right and i had just viewed it about uh, an hour back on coin market cap and there were 5599 coins listed there so in a span of one year there are more than 2500 coins which have grown i mean i don't know no but so a lot yeah. of them don't have a market cap of yeah none of them they are all question, they all question 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 marks when when it comes to that so i have i hope that answer the uh, thing one last yeah. question and because that's this related to the current pandemic okay the question is how does the covid 19 pandemic impact coins potential all right and this question is for the entire panel uh, if you can answer and then we will close shop today please uh, any any answers to that i think this pandemic How? opens a lot of uh, opportunities uh, for everyone who are in the building mode right uh, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, crypto was actually made for scenarios like these where people stop uh, trusting on the existing financial system you would see a lot of uh, liquidity injections happening all over the world where the currency is being uh, printed out of thin air uh, so uh, i mean uh, to give you an analogy where uh, majority of the times we don't realize like how much uh, value we are losing out of our own money it's like um, uh, we mm-hmm. had x percent of x percentage of the total money and then they printed uh, a, a lot more and our share became much lesser right so uh, it is uh, the the government is trying to loot money from the people to uh, 
fill their bags uh, and crypto was made for this and uh, i mean currently uh, we have seen that the crypto markets are very correlated with the uh, traditional markets but i think that uh, correlation will uh, definitely break or decouple at some point uh, the sooner the better yeah the sooner the better yeah. yeah of course yeah but but yeah. but you have to be ready before that right if you if you if you if you start investing uh, after that then uh, definitely you would have uh, lost all that i mean you would have incurred all, all that opportunity cost right yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah thank you thank you very much yes yeah, so uh, great guys thank you i think uh, you know we are just about 1 hour 30 minutes into this entire show uh, thank you very much uh, my speakers thank you mohak steven sachin for putting your valuable time with us and of course the audience you know we started off with a huge number then it trickled out so probably the saturday evening is calling all of them all right and uh, yeah. there are people who have definitely plans uh, elsewhere i would like to thank all my audience uh, thank you very much for the questions for being around with us for uh, for quite a while uh, this is our third episode of uh, the entire uh, blockchain e weekend series and uh, next weekend we are doing something called uh, you know bringing real world assets onto the blockchain and we are bringing some fantastic people to talk about how real world assets all right like the bill of lading like the gold like the silvers of the world which can be brought on blockchain and how we are tokenizing them so be with us next week as well all right thank you very much uh, i would like to uh, say bye bye to all of you and uh, yeah of course there are a lot of questions still coming in we will try to see whether we can take these questions down and send it across to our speakers here for answering them over our website very shortly we will move all our operations from our website and we'll see how it can work thank you very much guys thank you sachin mohak steven much thank appreciate you. your time so as soon as thank i you, end the session you. you know you guys can you know lounge around the speakers will be thrown into the backstage so we'll just chat for a while and be there all right thank you have a good thank weekend bye bye see Take you care. soon thank you for being here see you bye bye